Is space the final frontier or is it birth? If plants can communicate with each other, do my clothes talk to each other when I close the wardrobe? Toy Story style. Answers to these questions and more on this episode of This Paranormal Life. Nice. Welcome back to the podcast. It is Tuesday. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to the only paranormal podcast on the internet that is hosted by myself, Kit Greer, and this guy over here, Mr. Roy Pars. How are you doing today, Roy? Hashtag investigate. That's all I'm saying. Right. I, I'm just going to nip one thing in the bud, if you'll pardon the pun here. Go on. Uh, plants talk to each other? Yeah. What? Uh, maybe that's a whole other podcast for itself. <laughs> there <Yes>. are small <laughs> small civilizations of plants <laughs> in the forest. <laughs> that's why we're cutting it down. <laughs> we got to stop these little bastards <laughs> talking. <laughs> like, for example, if a tree gets cut down in one part of the forest... Other trees, like downwind from them, will know. Uproot and bolt it. <laughs> <laughs> They'll take up arms, Second Amendment style, and be ready for those sons of bitches when they come. Could you think of anything more terrifying than seeing a tree, like, reach down with his branches and rip out its own roots and then take off <laughs> down the street? Ready to drop kick you with its roots. <laughs> As always, we're just going to jump right into the podcast. Right. So today... I've got a crazy one for you. This actually comes as a listener submission from one of our day ones. Thank you, Shabazz, for this submission. Oh, amazing. It's 7th of July, 2016, in Dwarka, Delhi, in India. Okay. And Gwarev Tiwari has been in the bathroom for over an hour. Nothing unnormal there. Do you stay in the bathroom for longer? Than yep, that? that's my huge. Huge, okay. Yeah. So what's a longy? A longy? Four to five days. <laughs> Book a couple of days off work. <laughs> Boss is asking me, you hitting the beach this weekend? Taking some time off with your girl? Nope. <laughs> Just a longy, I say. <laughs> What's a longy says? I'm already out the office doors, ready to hit home, you know, prepping the bathroom for a <laughs> long weekend. We got scented candles. We got bath bombs. It's going to be a good one. <laughs> you know when you sit in the tub for an hour and your skin gets wrinkly? I need to go to A and E after a longy. They need to Another rest. longy, Rory. Yes, Doctor Murphy. I'm literally like an inch tall at this point. I'm bleeding the NHS for all it's worth. All right, hour in the bathroom. Just where is that man? His wife thought. Well, she knocks on the glass. Is everything okay? But there's no response. And come to think of it, there's no sign from the bathroom at all. Usually, there's the sign in the shower, sign of the the running water. Guarev. Is everything... We really shouldn't laugh. Guarev, is oh, everything God. okay? What's happening in there? He peers through the frosted glass and she can make out the shape of his body on the floor. Ooh. They start freaking out. They manage to break open the door and inside they find Guarev gasping for breath, his eyes poking out of his head. Jeez. Well, they rushed him to hospital and sadly, after around 90 minutes of struggling to save his life, he was pronounced dead. Medical professionals were confused as to the cause of death, but police investigation was sparked when on the surgery table they noticed a deep black mark around his neck. Something had happened to him. This was no accident. Dwarka police even started investigating a potential murder because through interviewing family, they determined Mr. Tawari and his wife were not getting on and they had Uh. actually fought for a couple hours the day before he died. With fists or words? Words. Okay. He was suspected of being unfaithful to his wife, so they were kind of trying to piece together some probable causes here. Gotcha. You, gotcha. Know, you know, these police chiefs, they're not uh, learned in the ways of the paranormal, so no. they just jump to, you know, marital tiffs. Exactly. What's the easy way out, isn't it? Yeah. Not that he got, like, Vulcan chopped by Casper himself <laughs> straight out of the loo. <laughs> What's a Vulcan chop? I don't know. He, Vulcans do pinches, don't they? Or Vulcan, <laughs> right. That little neck thing. That's thing Vulcan chop, like you put your hand in a V and then karate chop them. That's how I do it. I call it the Vulcan. I go Vulcan chop and then deck someone in their face. It's not even a chop, really. That's what I call a punch. <laughs> That's you, age 12, in jiu-jitsu class for the first time. Vulcan chop. Where did you learn that from? Sensei's like, you are the most disrespectful student I have ever had. The other child was bowing to you, <laughs> and you chopped him with his exposed <laughs> neck. He's just lying on the floor. <laughs> yeah, and guess what? I got another three in the bathroom, <laughs> Sensei. Those little bastards tried to gank me while I was taking a dump. 
It's like they were getting changed into their geese. <laughs> You're already a black belt and you came in here pretending <laughs> to be a blue belt. Why am I a 12 year old black belt? <laughs> I like the idea as well that you, you train in jujitsu for many years. Right. And then on the last day, your sensei awards you his black belt and then lets you know about the Vulcan shop. <laughs> yeah. That seems like the kind of thing that you're taught in an alley when you defect from the like the good sensei, yeah. and you have to, like the only way you can avenge your family is by learning the forbidden move. And it's called the Vulcan Jump because then it takes them really off guard when you need them <laughs> in the balls. And you know this bad sensei, he's like an alcoholic. His gi is all stained from years yeah, it's of so gross cheeseburgers and it's booze. Like, let me, let me tell you a little something about the Vulcan Chop. <laughs> he's a redneck. <laughs> Sometimes it's a punch in the nose. <laughs> Sometimes it's a smashed bottle over the back of the head of an unsuspecting foe. What it always is is just about the dirtiest thing you could think of doing at the time. <laughs> Hell, sometimes a Vulcan chop is just taking a dump in your best friend's <laughs> mouth as he's passed out at a party. Uh, not only do I think you're not an actual karate sensei... Mm -hmm. Uh, I've learned nothing in the time that I've been studying with you. I need payment and booze. I think you're ready. <laughs> the last thing I actually remember is being Vulcan chopped pretty damn hard. And my money was gone. As soon as, as, soon as you question him, he tries to kick you in the nuts and you simply sidestep and he falls over. Oh, crap. Someone who can counter the Vulcan chop? The prophecies are true. <laughs> he bows to you. Ah, oh. we've been extremely sidetracked. Okay. Right. Okay. Back on. So this dude got Vulcan chopped the shit out of in his bathroom, to say the least. Possibly by his wife. We don't know yet. So after eight hours of questioning Tawari's wife and father, police were no closer to understanding just what happened. Those closest to him were more disturbed, however, because the black mark on his neck was familiar to them. He'd spoken about it before he died. Oh. You see, Tawari was no ordinary person, no Joe Bloggs. He was a paranormal investigator. Oh yes, one of us. And founder of the Indian Paranormal Society. The IPS. We know those guys, we're big with them. We have a conference call with them every week. They rarely pick up, but we keep calling. We keep calling anyway. He started his career as a pilot in the USA. But in 2003, in the middle of his training, he moved into a new house. And little did he know, it was a haunted house. Damn, you always he gotta check. <laughs> There was, there was actually an episode of the show Nathan For You yes, uh, wh where he um, had the idea to have someone be the very first ever ghost realtor. That's right. Where I they saw show that properties, episode. but then also if the house is haunted, they have to disclose that information yeah. and they will pay for the exorcist to come in and cleanse the house yes. of uh, you know any evil spirits, which great idea. Great I think idea. we should actually get into that business model. Yeah. Very competitive market here in London. I think there's a market for it. I think so too. And we got to move because this place is haunted as shit. Yeah. And we've tried to get rid of those demons. But it's crazy. They fight back big time. You know why we have to edit this podcast? Because <laughs> the uncut version is eight to nine hours of us battling demons. <laughs> and you ever tried to Vulcan chop a ghost? <laughs> your hand goes right through and you <laughs> smash your favorite coffee mug. <laughs> Worst bit about it is they can connect with your balls instantly. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't touch them. <laughs> I swear to God, last night a banshee Vulcan chopped my left stickle half off my body. <laughs> they say they'll scream before the attack. She Turns out, it's me. <laughs> I'm the one that screams. <laughs> <laughs> the banshee scream <laughs> is the victim getting kneed in the nutsack <laughs> by the banshee. Little known fact. <laughs> we should have saved that one, uh... For the goddamn Patreon, but we'll give some of those sweet facts out <laughs> those for Those little gems you get on the bonus tiers. Yeah, it, it, he moved into a new house uh, during his training in 2003, but it was haunted. Damn. At this point, he didn't necessarily believe in anything paranormal. You know, he's he's like a, a top of his class, you know, a pilot school guy. None of that means shit when you're face to face with a little girl poltergeist in his house. He saw a vision of a dead little girl in his house. This is going very quickly. And he had to change his life's course at that moment. Because of the dead little girl? Because he knew that ghosts were real. Oh, right. Yeah, that'll do it. He couldn't be a pilot anymore. 
He scrapped the career as a pilot and he started studying to become a paranormal investigator. Hell yeah, bro. He received a certification of his degree and actually continued to pursue a PhD in metaphysical humanistic science. Nice. Okay. You know, he didn't go to Harvard paranormal like us, no. but you know, valiant effort nonetheless. Right. He probably graduated as well. Unlike <laughs> us. You know as well that all of the teachers at Harvard Paranormal wear geese. <laughs> Regardless of what they teach. It's like Paranormal 101, he's in a gi. <laughs> Communicating with those in the afterlife, gi. Yeah. All geese. They're telling you about like, you know, how you need to best prepare yourself for tackling ghosts. And then one of the students raises their hand. So is this why you wear a gi? Huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. This is just comfortable. <laughs> Yeah, I actually, I tried to look up, you know, to see what school he graduated from in right. paranormal sciences. I couldn't quite find it, but I did find other paranormal schools. You know, there are websites where you can sign up to become a certified paranormal investigator. You know, all of these schools are the type of schools that you look up, it's all fine. You know, you, you Google it, go there on Google Maps, and it's this wrecked building with a janitor outside. And you're like, I was looking for the Paranormal Institute. Wow, there hasn't been a Paranormal Institute here in over 25 years. Like every school you go to. It's going to be the exact same. I was thinking more like you pay the on online enrollment fee and then your computer gets the blue screen of death. <laughs> so, suddenly the locks in your house have been changed. Yeah, it made me really think we need to start a paranormal school. It's a ASAP. great idea, actually. Then, in 2009, he started the Indian Paranormal Society. The phones were off the hook. Over 250 emails a day came in and Holy over 500 shit. phone calls a day to their headquarters in Dwarka. Tiwari claims to have investigated 6,000 cases in his paranormal career. Oh my god, did he solve any of them? <laughs> this prolific investigation led to great fame and success and he starred in several TV shows about the paranormal, including Sci-Fi's Haunting Australia, Sony India's Boot Aya, Oh my god. Fear Files. Haunted Weekends, and MTV's Girls' Night Out. Right. Is that paranormal? Yes. Oh. Did I mention the girls are ghouls? <laughs> no. I would, have, I would have known if you had. This might be a good point to actually show you images of Tawari, and so you can see how much of a badass he was. I would love to see this. So I'll just show you some select images. Uh, there's one. Okay. But, so that's him on location in a graveyard with a walkie-talkie in a kind of action pose. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool, to be fair. It's a lot flashier than I thought. Now I'm seeing him in sunglasses, backpack yeah. on, like hair all adventure style, kind of crazed up yeah, a bit. Yeah, and he, he's a bit like Kanye West. He never smiles. He just always has the same expression. Well, once you're exposed to the paranormal world, you rarely do, for, <laughs> for numerous reasons. We heard about those 6,000 cases. I mean... Look at the lines under this man's eyes. Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, he's seen a lot of shit. I thought mine were bad. <laughs> so he was, like, like I say, he was a young guy, you know, running around in a leather jacket and sunglasses. Yeah, I think he was 31 when he died. Um, so he was like, he's a bit of a rock star of the paranormal world. Yeah, much like ourselves. <laughs> we haven't been invited to MTV's Girls Night Out yet, but... Uh, yet. We keep yet calling. Yet was the key word. But despite his glamorous lifestyle, things were not perfect in Tawari's life. He had mentioned to friends and family that he felt a negative force, this is quote, negative force was pulling him towards it, that he was trying to control it but seemed unable to do so. His father revealed that after Tawari died, he had said to his father, quote, I am feeling extremely uncomfortable for quite some time. I am being followed. I am being watched by someone who refuses to leave me. Whoa. It's pretty dark. That's spooky. But his wife didn't really think she could help him. She figured he was just overworked and depressed as a result. Because as someone pointed out on an online comment thread, 6,000 investigations in seven years works out kind of around two investigations a day with no breaks. <laughs> That's not, there's no way this is real. What's more, his wife, Arya, didn't even like the ghostbusting profession. She wanted her husband to wear a suit and tie and carry a leather case to a corporate office. You can do that and still be a paranormal investigator. <laughs> even more creepily, Tawari said during conversations with his family over dinner that black marks on the neck were signs of revenge in spirits in distress. He would often say, do not disrespect the dead. 
It was like he knew what could happen or what was going to happen. And of course, despite the detectives trying to play this case down, the rest of the paranormal society lost their shit over this. Of course. They thought there had to be some cause. Was it actually a ghost? Was it a dark force that had been haunting Tawari for some time, like he said, that finally got to him? One member, Sashi Dube, said, Sometimes spirits leave negative impact in your home if they are disturbed. Quote, Too much interaction with spirits can have its side effects. And indeed, Tawari's own father believes he has seen spirits in their house and believes they could be connected to his death. I think it's mad that he's like, all oh, right, don't, don't mess with the dead. you got to respect, you know, spirits. So this is a guy who opened up 6,000 paranormal we cases. We just saw him kneeling by a grave. And just- shot an MTV-style <laughs> television show in an actual graveyard. <laughs> it's very true. It's like, yo, what's up, motherfuckers? This is MTV's <laughs> pissing in graveyards. <laughs> It's like, is this, who's watching this show? Do do you want to see what, while we're on it, do you want to see what his show looked like? Yeah, for sure. Okay. It shows you his dedication. You know, we've seen his bags under his eyes. He actually is wearing crutches in this, so I don't even know what happened to him. What is going on with this guy? I mean, stop. (laughs) Stop if you're this ill. (laughs) This investigator is bent on catching one on camera. So he's never caught one on camera. Oh, is there someone standing here? No, there isn't. In, they discover someone or something uh, definitely lurking Well, in the I wouldn't say definitely. <laughs> but despite Mr. Turi's father uh, believing that it could be uh, something to do with spirits, not everyone's convinced the cause was paranormal. One of Mr. Turi's co-workers, Alan Tiller, an Australian Ghostbuster that worked with him on Haunting Australia, he wrote on Facebook that it was a simple heart attack that killed Tori. Oh, well, what's with the black marks then? And the police, as usual in all of our cases, have signed off on simple suicide. Right. I mean, I get it. Honestly, I didn't really get to the bottom of that because in all of the articles I read across different newspapers, none of them mentioned any instruments of suicide. I don't, like, they're... I don't believe there was any rope hanging from the ceiling. Right, right, right. It was discovered right. with this marker on his neck. Huh. So. so that kind of brings us to the present day. All we have is an unsolved case. The police have put this down to either suicide or natural causes, basically. Right. And they've kind of poo-pooed the paranormal claims. Um, it's really only his father that's championing that and maybe the paranormal society championing that at this point. Definitely mysterious circumstances, definitely spooky, the claims that he made before he died. What do you make of this? It's weird, obviously. I mean, I don't know the man well enough <laughs> to, to understand completely where his mind was at. Mm. Or Obviously, you've got marital problems. Yep. You've got, I'm going to go ahead and assume, not very well performing paranormal TV shows. You got, and then, you know, you're like, oh, well, I guess I'll just bury myself in my work then. Turn around, you got 6,000 open cases screaming at you like little children trying to get some freaking paranormal crumbs off the table. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. It's hard to say. He was definitely under a lot of pressure. Yeah. I would say. Absolutely. It sounds like from his family, as well as running a paranormal society that's maybe too big for itself, you know? Yeah. So what happened to the paranormal society? It's still going. I think they took a few weeks off to like regroup the structure of it. Um, but I believe they're still going. Like the investigators say, 98% of what they uh, find is bullshit. Absolute uh, garbage. They have select cases that do defy physics and logic. Does Uh, London have a paranormal school? Is there a gap in the market, essentially, that we need to fill? I mean, we already have the Paranormal Secret Society, which is pretty great. Well, let's find out. We should really know this. I know We know there's a ghost club. Right. There is a ghost club. There is a a London ghost club, which sounds admittedly kind of funny at first. Yeah, I'll be honest. ghost club. I thought it was going to be ghosts when we showed up. Yeah. Like we went in there straight up cosplaying the busters themselves, yeah. um, ready to just mercilessly kill a bunch of ghosts. Yeah. Uh, it was a really um, civilized group of uh, open minded individuals. Yeah. It was actually quite lovely. They're actually disturbingly like us. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, we only discovered that after the third Vulcan chop. 
which was <laughs> which was actually a katana strike to the back <laughs> of a small group that I think were doing a seance or some shit. <laughs> They had some candles. Just imagining like a community hall, really chill gathering. There's just like a friendly guy at the entrance. He's like, thank you for coming tonight. Yeah, three pounds in everyone. It covers the uh, covers the drinks tables there. Got a few snacks, a few biscuits. Um, yeah, huh? Yeah, we're, we're going to have... A Can I bring Gary... in my nunchucks? Right, we don't usually allow weapons in, so... Um... Ah, uh, can you tell me where the cloakroom is? <laughs> Uh, yeah, we've got a cloakroom just over here. Okay. Oh, and uh, yeah. one more thing. Uh, I just yeah, wanted yeah, to... Yeah. Vulcan Show! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think you've even watched an episode of Star Trek. <laughs> Star what? <laughs> sure I have. Luke Skywalker's Final Frontier. <laughs> he uses the Force or some shit well, I... to kill his daddy. <laughs> Isn't that what we I all connect with that. dream <laughs> of? <laughs> Vulcan chopping our papa. I love that Vulcan chopping <laughs> is always just the dirtiest thing you can do. It changes every time. It just means you're a shit. <laughs> if you do it, you're just being the worst version of yourself you could possibly be. Um, I can confirm that there is a British Paranormal Association. Okay, that's pretty good. Their site is under scheduled maintenance, so I can't look at the website. Goddamn men in blacks are everywhere. But uh, it looks suitably spooky. So, I mean, this case is pretty opaque. Right. You know, we got a very limited set of information. Police basically saying, we don't really know what happened. Family saying, we don't really know what happened. Just a kind of ominous um, few lines, really, from the man himself. Uh, that kind of sounds like he was predicting us in a little, little way. Yeah. Uh, but we don't know, sadly, we don't know if he was just alluding to depression when he talked about he was being haunted. Yeah. So, I mean, either that or the vice president of the Indian Paranormal Society saw his chance to rule the kingdom. Yeah, you're saying it could be. Down. I mean, the police did investigate a murder cause. So, yeah, that's what they kind of thought first thing off the bat. You see that that golden paranormal mountain in your future. You do whatever it takes to claim it. It's true. You think we were the first hosts of this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the fifth Rory. <laughs> we have. <laughs> <laughs> Rory isn't my birth name, okay? <laughs> it's a title. Chief Rory of the Secret it's Society. so scary. It's, it's a terrifying realization. It really is. All I can think about now is like, because as soon as I kill the Rory and become the host, all I can think about while I'm trying to be funny is that there's someone behind me ready to take me out and become the next host. I know. Imagine oh, just shit. like revealing that to your girlfriend. It's like, yeah, but Rory's not my real name. What? Oh, and like this face, this isn't my real skin. No, I actually took the old Rory's vocal cords. That's why we keep it consistent. <laughs> Sorry, lost it there for a second. <laughs> Some words come out creepier than the others. Your two <laughs> eyes are pointing in different directions sometimes. <laughs> What's your real name? Antrentos Flump. <laughs> are, are you human? <laughs> Partly. <laughs> As in part of the old Rory. <laughs> now your voice is all weird all the time. <laughs> I feel like you're just Antrentos Flump at this point. <laughs> No, I'm not! <laughs> Don't call me that! Never again! <laughs> you sound like my dad! <laughs> Algantos flum! <laughs> okay. So, dumb. so, I think we gotta uh, come down to some conclusions on this case. Right. If you have to determine, you know, was the death of the chief of the Paranormal Society of India, was his death paranormal? Are you chalking this up to a yes or a no on this episode? Well, I think Andantos would be yes. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> um, he's, he's actually pretty gullible, Andantos. But Rory, the host of this paranormal life, um, can be quite skeptical okay. in the face of... Uh, cases like this, where there's a lot of unopened doors, closed windows, blocked chimneys, <laughs> stuck drawers. Blocked uh, noses that need need sneezed. Exactly. Um, so it's hard to say whether or not this is actually paranormal, even though it is a case that involves the death of a paranormal investigator. Yes. What are you what are you what are you thinking? I think it's very tempting because it is Garblonian. <laughs> 
the beast that now is Kit. Don't call me that <laughs> shit on air, bro. I have to edit it out every time. I told you, Aunt Dante, you little <laughs> fucking <laughs> lizard. Aunt Dante is just an Italian guy. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, is it? You're from another planet, and I loved the podcast and lived in Italy. Came here, killed Rory. <laughs> Such a rich lore. Yeah, I think because it's all surrounding the paranormal and it's within the paranormal world, we Mm want to call this paranormal. And there are definitely other deaths within the paranormal community. we got to investigate. Yeah. Kind of like rock stars, you know, there's the 27 Club. We are like rock stars, yeah. (laughs) That's how I like to think of myself as a Garblonian. I mean, as Kit. (laughs) I like to think of myself as a rock star. You know, there's lots of rock stars who die at age 27. And it's like, is that a curse? Or is that just it attracts people who are going to die at 27 yeah. and maybe the paranormal world is like that too this guy worked his ass off well it's like the old saying you know um people are like the rock star life live fast die young that's it um but there's actually one more sentence in there which is <laughs> live fast investigate die young that's the bit everyone leaves out it's yeah really weird which is so weird because it's all it's pretty pivotal investigate as fast as you can as many cases as you can six thousand 10,000, as many as you can. And of course, then die young because your body will fail. Exactly. Or you are even successful in the slightest amount and then taken out by um, uh, Man in Black with a sniper rifle. It's definitely suspicious. What's more rock star than that? The the thing is, you know, we have had other paranormal investigators who are more anti-establishment, more um, paranoid. Right. And it seems weirder when they die. But with um, To Worry... He really just did seem to be about the ghosts and about the hauntings. So yeah, not you know, like the big style conspiracy theories. And I don't, I don't know enough about um, Indian society and the, like the government's relationship with society. I don't know if there's like an Indian FBI that's trying to shut people up in the way that Americans are paranoid about the FBI and CIA. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. But if we're coming on to conclusions, I'm not sure this is paranormal. I think uh, this guy was overworked, having a difficult time. Aren't we all? Uh, and I, people die of heart attacks and things like that all the time. I just yeah. don't know what happened. I don't think we have enough evidence here to say that this was paranormal. Damn it. Damn it. Shit it all to hell. But, but it's a good one. Very interesting case and an exceptional suggestion from our listener Shabazz. Thank you for sending that in to us. <clears throat> if anyone else has any other paranormal stories or thoughts about this case, you can send those into this paranormal life podcast at gmail.com. You can hit us up on socials, on Twitter at this para life, on Facebook.com forward slash this paranormal life. And of course, you can get the premium shit, the dirty ghee, the, yeah. the Vulcan chop. Download should, of information. We should do the research notes for this week's episode should be a step-by-step instruction on how to officially do the Vulcan shop. Absolutely. That that is listen, you know, it, we're asking two bucks a month for that knowledge. Exactly. Listen, you couldn't you couldn't get that with ten thousand pounds at three years of university. Okay? Absolutely no not. No one's teaching you the Vulcan shop. Uh, that's at patreon.com forward slash this paranormal life. So thank you to all of you listening who have already pledged on patreon we really can't thank you enough for um, making the podcast possible yeah and we would like to thank out some specific names right here in the podcast right now let's go here we go thank you to devin maxwell devin maxwell well well look who showed his face here again it's my best friend devin yeah twisted it on you didn't didn't i Thank you to Sam Tootin. Sam Tootin? Damn Tootin, he's my best friend. <laughs> Even though Devin is too. I got two best friends. Thank you, Josh Lynch. Did I say two? I meant three. Josh is my best bud from school. <laughs> <laughs> so straightforward. <laughs> Thank you to Carney Turrell. But there's always room for more friends. Jump on the wagon, <laughs> Carney. Keep your friends in a wagon? Yeah. <laughs> Where do you keep yours? I don't keep friends anywhere. (laughs) You don't collect friends. Thank you to Michael Fazio. Get on in there, you little bastard. (laughs) I'm zapping them now. Really? Yeah. You got got a cattle prod. I got a cattle prod. You treat my friends locked up. What do you think friends (laughs) mean? Keep them safe. I want my friends to live forever. So they can't possibly stay outside. It's dangerous outside. <laughs> but not in the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you to Tom Bagley. Tom Bagley's one of our best buds. He actually drives the wagon. Okay. And then when we stop, I put him back in, okay. the, in the wagon. Just wanted to be clear. Yeah, just with keep that. him yeah. safe. Tommy's a runner. <laughs> They're all runners. <laughs> They're all, my friends are actually really good at running. Until I break their legs <laughs> when we stop the wagon and we're back at my place. Uh, thank you to Ryan Griffin. Ryan Griffin, the majestic beast. He is... Wait, what's a griffin? It's a bird, right? <laughs> yeah, isn't half that like bird, the, Half lion or some half, shit. Half lion, half bird. All friends. <laughs> Get in the wagon. <laughs> thank you, Ian Tarver. Ian Tarver, who went to Harvard. Paranormal Harvard, that is. That's, That's where we I'm met and became best buds. Thank you to Adam Roberts. Adam Roberts, the doll. Thank you so much for contributing to the This Paranormal Life Patreon. Thank you very much. To Samuel Vine. Samuel does it for the Vine. Thank you so much for contributing to the hey. Patreon and chucking a couple coins in the bucket of the paranormal peasants. Thank you to a very special special patron ooh Sockrat nice thank you so much Sockrat he's for traveled forward in time somehow <laughs> probably stole his dickling brother's technologies and traveled forward in time somehow I don't know how that happened he actually just chucked some belly button lint and buttons in the, <laughs> <laughs> the bucket of the paranormal peasants <laughs> And when we asked him why he did that, he just shit himself in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> and we we're like, it really seemed to have disadvantaged him more than us, but he seemed to be pleased yeah, about it. Yeah, he's the one who has to spend the rest of yeah. the day with his own shitty trousers. But that's sock right. It's fine. Thank you, Bradley Carr. Bradley Carr. Vroom, vroom, motherfucker. Get on <laughs> over here and chuck a couple coins in the bucket of the Paranormal Pals. Thanks for contributing. <laughs> Thank you, Reggie Murphy. Reggie M M M M Murphy. The second base batting for the paranormal. Uh, the What's our baseball team name? Oh, shit. The Miami Doblins. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Doblins is good, yeah. <laughs> the Doblins. Thank you, too. Simply, Diane. Diane, uh, I need you to just come over here and... Um, you know, throw some some coins in the the bucket of the paranormal pals peasants. Sorry, just a little closer. It's at the back of that wagon over there, right at the back of that wagon. Yep, a little closer. Boom! Welcome to the wagon. That's right. We're best friends now. Meet your new buddies. <laughs> They're all sad and dead. <laughs> yeah, you definitely seem confused about what, what humans a are. Best and friend <laughs> is, and yeah, what a human is. And thank you to Sam McCann. Sam McCann, Sam McCann, he's the man. If he can't do it, no one McCann. Thank you, lastly but not leastly, but the mostly, to Jessica Little John. Jessica and Little John. <laughs> I want to thank <laughs> no, both no, of you it's all. It's just one person, actually, it's Jessica Little John. Jessica and Little John. No. Tiny Little John. No, I mean, you might know Baby a Little John. John normally, but this isn't, they haven't, it's just Jessica Little John. Yeah. There's one person. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Uh, they're both going in the wagon. Okay. Welcome, little John, to your new friends. <laughs> you cut her in half. <laughs> <laughs> Vulcan jump! <laughs> <laughs> Thus concludes our um, thank yous for this episode. If you haven't heard your name being shouted out just yet, don't worry. It is coming. It's coming, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. We will see you next Tuesday for another Paranormal Tale. Have a great weekend. Thanks for tuning in. And Goodbye. remember... Oh. Live fast, investigate, die, die young. R.I.P. Paul good Walker. Good night.